everyone, and it's great to be back to your Daily Five. My name is Michelle Schneider, Director of Trading Education Research at Market Gauge, and I am always happy to be a guest of StockTalks.com. So for today's Daily Five, I want to start out a little teeny bit differently because I want to give you some ideas about what might outperform in a new wave of inflation. I know you've probably seen a lot of reports about disinflation or inflation has peaked. My whole theory is that that is not true. And we can see how it's not true. We still have not only great geopolitical risk all around that I'm not gonna go through the details of, but we're continuing to spend a lot of money here in this country. And even with the strong labor market, we have a Fed that is definitely looking to be aggressive, but can they be aggressive enough? And then on top of that, we have good old Mother Nature rearing her little ugly head right now, wreaking havoc around the world. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk, first of all, if you haven't read my 2023 outlook, everything that I just mentioned in great detail from the housing market to the labor market, to the government spending, to the food inflation, to the Mother Nature issues, Geopolitics has been described in detail with actionable information in my outlook, which is still available when you go to our market gauge site. And also this weekend, I'm going to be writing uh, my reaction to the State of the Union, which I've never done before in terms of uh, political. This is all what I heard for the economy and how it was even more inflationary. And I, forgive me for the spelling error here. So also the market is proving to be in this trading range and especially in the economic modern family. So if we look at IWM and all the other sectors, which we're not gonna look at today, they're below the 23 month, but above the 80 month. And that's basically what our prediction is going forward. So here's our picks for today. NOV for solar, excuse me, floor construction, Schlumberger, uh, Tiva, Pharma, Gold, and Northrop Gump. Different sectors, but all could be really in great shape going forward. Let's go to the charts. Okay, so the first pick is in the energy sector purposely. Um, and this is Novink. It's, it's an oil, energy, equipment, and services. Um, one of the things that we heard uh, Biden say was that we're going to need oil and gas for the next 10 years, at least, before we can fully switch to alternative energy, number one. And number two, Russia announced early this morning that they were going to cut back their oil production because of all of the sanctions that are on them. So the oil war is just getting going, or so it seems. You could obviously look at the oil futures in and of themselves, but if you want to play it through a company that would be needed for creating the oil, this is a good one. And so right now, what you see is we're in a bullish phase. We're above the 50 day moving average. We're not that far from the 50. So it's an actually decent risk to under the 50 day moving average. And also I would wanna see it at this point, maybe get through 24. I'm not saying you have to wait for that, but if you bought it, and it started to dip down even under these recent lows of the week, which is 2250, you could have a nice tight probe to get into it or wait for a bigger strength, risk a little longer and hold on to the position. We can see right here that it is still slightly underperforming the SPY, so that's interesting. And from the real motion perspective right here, you did have not quite a full mean reversion because the mean reversion would have been more looking like this where it crosses over the Bollinger Band and then goes back under it. In this case, we touched it and came off, which is why we're seeing this type of consolidation and resistance. However, we did have a golden cross in the real motion indicators. We're just going sideways. So this would be a really good one to look at, if not for when you hear this video, certainly looking into next week. It's one of the stronger performing stocks that I have seen. The next one is something I may have talked to you about before. This is Floor Corporation. Now, <clears throat> this is really more related to the idea of infrastructure. Uh, in terms of a fundamental reason. It hasn't reported its earnings yet, so that's something to be wary of. Uh, that will be coming, I believe, uh, in the next week or so. But what we like about this is a couple of things. Number one is that 
we've had huge uptrend really that started actually in September. And then when we had the October break, just showing you that nothing is impervious to a major sell-off, including this. So always be wary of the macro. This has pretty much gone straight up. And now you have a very unique opportunity, I would say more to look at early next week because it's forming an inside day right on the 50. Breaks down under this 3480 level, forget it, I wouldn't touch it, I'd wait for earnings. Holds it and takes out the high of 36, which is the high of Thursday, then I think you have a very low risk trade. Now again, this is underperforming the SPY a little bit. Um, and so these are all looking much better chart wise, but in terms of leadership, SPY with the big rally it's had recently took some leadership that could change. And the only thing I would say is that we do have a divergence here in the momentum. This is why we love these plugins. We are now below the 50 day moving average, even though the price is above, which is why I'm saying a little bit of patience would do you good for this. Wait for it to clear the 50 day and the momentum and definitely the take out the highs of 36 that we saw uh, on Thursday. The next pick is also in the energy sector. Schlumberger. And this too looks a little similar in that it's hugging onto the 50. Looks like it's about to take out the leadership here on the SPY. And once again, golden cross in real motion, getting right here, still a little bit of a negative divergence. So these are things that are setting up potentially if the momentum improves and we stay above the 50 day moving average. And they're both in areas uh, construction or oil equipment services that from a fundamental standpoint can actually potentially survive inflation, another wave of it, but more importantly, uh, also um, you should know that obviously nothing survives if we get like a big liquidity crisis. Now, this is one I've talked to you about before. This is in the pharmaceutical. This is an Israeli pharmaceutical company. They recently settled a huge suit uh, based on opioid crisis they settled a suit for life and they have to pay out every uh, year. Now they reported earnings. And so this was the gap down from earnings, but look at where it's holding right here is the 50 day moving average. Again, yes, leadership, not so much. And momentum is definitely breaking down. So again, all these picks are more like let's not buy today, but really good ones to look at for next week. A, if the market holds, B, even if the energy takes off or the rest of the market goes flat, and C, uh, certainly if in pharmaceuticals, this will have absolutely nothing to do with the idea of what happens in the overall market, because this is actually generic pharmaceuticals, which could do well in any environment, as we know. So here you have 50, let's say maybe it gets back over 10, that would probably be my indication, super tight risk. And you definitely want to see in our ACP plugin momentum to go back over that 50 day moving average. The next one, of course, I have to bring you is gold. Because I talk so much about gold, let's take a look at where it's at right now. Now, what's interesting is on a 23 month moving average basis, which I wrote a daily about, it's actually above the 23 month. But gold, after looking like it was going to fly, now, of course, is under the pressure of the idea of higher interest rates. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's where it's going to stay. You can see here underperformance, but look at the divergence and the momentum. We're on the 50, we're slightly above the 50, so this is something to watch out for. But here, I would tell you right now, if we can hold right above this 50-day moving average, right at the momentum level, then what that tells me right now is that we have a situation where you can either buy this next dip or worst case, this thing goes down closer to the 200, anywhere between 165 and 168 in gold is an unbelievable buy, holds 173, a good buy. And obviously if we can take out after this gap down, the high of the gap, which was at 175.2, I would call it 176, then that would show you that gold is actually departing from the rest of the market. And my last pick for today is Northrop Grumman. I'm really happy actually in a way that it gave us this opportunity. Uh, it also reported earnings for this huge dip because what's happening right now as I talk to you is A, we are back over outperforming the SPY, which is really interesting considering where the price is. 
And in Momentum, we had that classic mean reversion where it broke down under the Bollinger Band, tried it a couple of times, didn't really go anywhere, broke down again. And now you can see the momentum is starting to click up. And what's interesting about the real motion indicator is that what you also want to see, obviously, is that this little peak in momentum, if you look at the price, you want to at least make sure we get to that price back up here at 466 to show that this isn't just some kind of a short covering rally. But nonetheless, if we can get through 466, that would be showing more outperformance against this buy. And more importantly, if we spread out the chart here, it would mean that you're getting through all of this and this would really start to be looking like some kind of a confirmation of a bottom. Obviously, we would have resistance up to the gap, which happens to be also where the 200-day moving average is, and we would do declining slope in the 50. But from a fundamental reason, should things heat up anywhere around the world, this is a defense play. So it's a pretty widespread portfolio I've given you from two energy plays to a construction play to a pharmaceutical play to gold as the ultimate raw material hedge and now defense. So regardless of what market conditions are, obviously be wary of a meltdown completely. But if the market holds and stays in the trading range and things start to look a little bit more dicey in the energy sector and what's happening around the world, now you have a good list to take a look at for next week. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.